The Three Penny Opera by Bertolt Brecht and Kurt Weill. The plot is presented by Opera Inside, the online opera guide. The roles. Jonathan Peacham, owner of the company Beggar's Friend. Celia Peacham, his wife. Polly Peacham, their daughter. Mac Heath, called Mac the Knife, assassin and gangster. Tiger Brown, London's chief of police. Lucy, his daughter. Jenny, brothel owner and whore. A preliminary remark, the language of this play is rude. To maintain authenticity the synopsis uses the words of the play. Affair in Soho. The beggars beg, the thieves steal, the whores whore. A carnival singer sings the Mori Tat about Mackie Messer, the assassin who kills on commission. Peachum runs a shop with his wife, where he gives future beggars the right outfit and assigns them their districts. In return, they have to give away a part of their miserable income. Their daughter Polly did not come home that night, they fear the worst. Polly Peachum was away, because she was celebrating her wedding in a shabby horse stable in Soho with Mackie the Knife, civil name Mackeith. Mackeith's rogue friend stole the wedding presents and sing a wedding song to them. To set the mood, Polly sings the song of Pirate Jenny. It is a ballad about a barmaid, who helps the arriving pirates to plunder the town. Briefly, the wedding guests take a shudder when Tiger Brown appears, London's dreaded chief of police. He's an old friend of Mackeith's and has come simply to offer his congratulations. Together the two old war comrades sing the cannon song. Back with her parents, Polly tells about the wedding. Peachum is frantic, he was hoping for his daughter as a help for his age. With the bible in his hand he prophesies her a bad future. He warns her that the world is poor and now man is Peachum bad. is doing everything he can to put Mackeith behind bars. He's even convinced Tiger Brown to arrest his friend. Mackeith finds out and has to go into hiding. Wistfully Polly says goodbye to her husband. Peachum's wife has bribed the brothel loner Jenny to report to the police as soon as Mackeith shows up at the brothel. Jenny's sure he'll turn up because the sex drive will lead him here. As a matter of fact, soon after he shows up. Nostalgically the to remember the time when he was her brutal protector and she prostituted herself for him. Without hesitation Jenny calls the police. Soon Mackeith will be taken away and put in jail. There he is visited by Lucy Brown, the police chief's daughter. She is pregnant by him. When Polly shows up, she's furious and they fight jealously. Lucy swears she'll get even with Polly. She presses her father to make sure Mackeith gets out of jail. This happens and soon Mackeith is back with Jenny. There they philosophize about what man lives on. They agree. First comes grub, then comes morality. Peachum doesn't give up. He threatens the police chief to disrupt the queen's upcoming coronation celebrations with his beggars. Once again Mackeith is betrayed by the whores while visiting the brothel. This time he is sentenced to death. He lacks the money to bribe the guards for an escape attempt, and is led to the gallows. Everyone is waiting for him at the execution ground. When the noose is put around his neck, Peachum announces that Mackeith has been pardoned by the queen. A mounted messenger appears. He announces that on the occasion of her coronation, the queen has decided that Mackeith should not only be granted freedom, but also be granted a title of nobility, an appanage and a castle. The peace ends and all proclaim the moral of the story. Let's fight injustice, but in moderation, for it will freeze to death, if left alone. www.operainside.com All about operas. Learn more about this great opera. With interesting facts and great YouTube videos. Visit us.